So the first overall pick in the draft, we want to assume right now, is going to be Caleb Williams, correct? Yeah, I mean, we, no, it's, again, we're, like, we're, regardless you know, of who picks Nick him. and Ken mock February 26th. We could put Caleb Williams one, sure. Um, so if if Caleb Williams or like quarterback, let's just call it quarterback, quarterback sure. first overall pick in the draft. That's second, pretty safe, I think. Yeah. So second, whether Washington picks or does not pick, I feel pretty good that that is quarterback. Quarterback two. Now to be QB fair, two. I guess like the weirdness, like last year it was like Houston picked twice in a row. And so like that was kind of weird. So like you weren't going to get, there were four quarterbacks that could have gone one, two, three, four, or could have gone in the top five. So it like, it doesn't have to be like this, depending on who trades and things can get really weird. But I agree with you. Like, I think that makes logical sense right now, just that there are four compelling quarterback prospects. There are lots of teams picking at the top that need, there isn't like the team that doesn't need one at two, three. <laughs> the team that doesn't need one is at one right now, but they might need one eventually. Um I think that makes logical sense. I think, you know, if you had a betting market for what position the second qu the overall pick would be, quarterback would be a massive, massive favorite. So I, I agree with you on that. It, and it feels like like the top picks in the draft are all going to be like offensive players for the most part. That's what, what Drew was saying, what Whale was saying last hour right. with us, right? We have quarterbacks, we have a couple wide receivers, and we have like Joe Walt, the big offensive lineman, who I think is probably going to go to the Chargers. But anyway, so I guess the way that what I'm going to say gets upended a little bit is if we find out, so a couple things would have to happen. Caleb Williams has to go first. Washington wants only Caleb Williams. We think that the Patriots are not going to select a quarterback. Maybe they like telegraph that they trade for Justin Fields, go after someone in free agency. Like they are not taking a quarterback, right? So the thought would that be like they're going to take one of the wide receivers. So is it a team maybe goes up to two to draft a receiver? Like the receiver that they like to block the Patriots, to get ahead of the Patriots, take the wide receiver of their choice. Or Washington or another team takes a quarterback, and then at three, like the first wide receiver off the board, is it worth playing at this point? And like Mike is cycling through this here, and like I don't even think he's listed here. Did you see that can, like, market that just came up? Can, Mike, can you put the non-quarterback market back up on the screen? Did you see this? See this? Heard about this? Yeah. Uh, so this is... So for people that can't like listening to this right now, um, first drafted non-quarterback Marvin Harrison minus six fifty and like, a deserved favorite. Joe Alt offensive tackle eight to one. To maybe not Malik Neighbors nine to one. Jared Verse Dallas Turner pass rushers thirteen and fourteenth. Uh, Lakitu from the Mario series is fifteen to one. I don't know who that is. Laytu Latu. I don't know who that is. Brock Bowers. Whatever. Brock Bowers is not. It's, there's no chance Brock Bowers is the first non-quarterback off the board. He's like a six foot one tight end. He can be as awesome as he wants. He's not. It's not happening. So yeah, like I, I'm at this point. I think Harrison's the most likely. Yeah. I'm not convinced he's the first. I'm not but convinced who knows? he's the first non-quarterback off the board. Yeah. Who knows? Like I'd I'd rather play neighbors. I gotta or, find this thing. I didn't even know this market or, existed. I gotta find this. Or. Thing. Or if okay. you or me or you, the person listening, are right. of the opinion and we start to get information that Chicago's going, one is quarterback, Caleb Williams is going first. Washington's taking a quarterback, whatever. Patriots want a quarterback also. And then maybe Arizona trades down. Like if you think that this is all going to happen, the Chargers are on the board with the fifth pick. I have no inside information that they would take Joe Wall to the offensive lineman. All they talk about is wanting to build an offensive line and run the football. That's like, it's all like Jim Harbaugh, like sexually fantasizes about this. That's what they want to do. <laughs> Jim, what do you like? Uh, Joe Alt. <laughs> right, that's so, like, that's so, so like, I don't know. Is it bet Alt and neighbors basically build like a no Marvin Harrison position? I, I guess. There are two main criteria that I think a lot of people know that that if you want to bet into these markets for six man of the year, these are fair. Just think about it. Like who who tends to win six man of the year? Uh, a guy who scores a lot off the bench. That's like a pretty easy criteria to, to measure and has been true historically. And then also team success tends to be like a bizarrely important factor in this. Uh, nobody's ever won this award, I think, or maybe won previously going under 500. The average winner tends to win like a lot of games. Like it's usually one of the, the better teams in the league. And this is where the disagreement comes in. Cause I think people look at the seed for the Kings, the success off the bench you get there. Like I think of the teams that are remotely good, 
Tim Hardaway Jr. and Monk score the most points of those players, and they're the two favorites. So that's not really where the argument comes in. The argument's like, well, yeah, but Sacramento might be like the eight seed, or they might be like in the play-in. Would they give the award to a guy on a team that's in that round? And that's where you get disagreement, which is really fun. Uh, where I'm kind of settling is unless someone like blows, like knocks our socks off here for the next 20 games and can, even does it in like three straight games, then yeah, I think they're going to give it to the guy who's going to be in the seven seed and in the play in and whatever. Cause he's just, he makes the most sense. If you take team success and scoring off the bench together, he it's him and Hardaway and Hardaway's trending way down. And Monk is just doing his thing. 15, a game, 16, a game, occasional 20. They're pretty good. It's just like really safe. Um, so I, I think like, I think there's, this is the award I've seen the most discussion on. Like, I want to bet that guy. I want to bet that guy. I want to bet that guy. And I just, uh, I'd like to just see more consistency before I would really like be a, a firm stink. believer that we have a, right. And to be fair, Monk kind of stinks too. Like he's but not that good, like, but he's just the least like stinky. If, it, right. if Utah were better, I feel like Clarkson would win. Like, it's almost right. like, well, he like, scores like, the most Clark... by far. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. Bogdanovich. Like these were two really compelling candidates. It's just, oh, by the way, the teams are miserable. And you even saw that like yeah, this let's points poll. Right. Yeah. Which like, like there's like a, a poll that I don't think had many voters participate. Also, is he going to start now? You... I could be wrong about that. But with Trey out, is Bogdanovich going to start now? That, so that would be my guess. But e like even even putting that to the side, because like he's not going to win anyway. So, But like even if he did play off the bench the rest of the year, I think even what like this limited polling told you is, hey, like neat, neat points per game. And again, it's that team success angle where people that, like Monk and Hardaway got the most votes in this small poll. It just at least, it again, emphasizes how important team success, like you got to at least be in the playoff chase. So unless I get three games, five games, anything consistent at all, and how about not like Levert next game is like 0 for 7 for two points, which happens all the time with him. Can we get like a little consistency? Then I think you could, I think you could turn the tide on this. I think there's someone who like somebody could make that case. Just everyone's been so bad, no one's done it yet. And if no one, we're running out of time, clock's ticking. And if nobody does it, Monk wins. Like that's who wins when it just stays the same. He wins. Something's got to change and nothing has changed yet. What if the Milwaukee Bucks go nuclear down yeah. the stretch in Supernova? Uh, Bobby Portis is at a massive price, and he's actually as a, a string of nice statistical games here, including the two games coming out of the All Star break that that the Bucks have won. So Milwaukee right now, I'm just bringing up the standings here, and also they're they're plus one twenty to win the division. Uh, I I think they're going to win. They're one game behind Cleveland right now. I think Milwaukee's big time on the come here. Milwaukee is looks to be almost certainly a top three seed at worst, maybe the two seed in the Eastern Conference, either the two or the three. Um, and if they, let's say they win 20 games down the stretch here, they'll have almost 60 wins. They'll have 57 wins. Giannis probably not going to win MVP. Doc Rivers obviously is not going to win Coach of the Year. Does Milwaukee get rewarded at all for anything? Could Bobby Portis win six base 125 to one right now? This 57 was, this is win same... Milwaukee with Bobby Portis over eight seed Malik Monk. You've been a big SGA person all year. He's the second choice. He was great yesterday. Maybe not as many people watching, but still awesome as they, they come from behind and beat Houston. And then, you know, Luca loses. He's third. It kind of goes, descends down from there. Any, like, updated thoughts here on NBA Most Valuable Player off of, honestly, like, a string of really strong performances by the top two candidates? So this is honestly the, the best way I have to look at it. And this is not just based off of my own thought process. This is off of conversations with a handful of voters. Now, there's 100 voters in the NBA. So this is not like a comprehensive sample. This is not a straw poll. But I, what, what I will tell you is if the Thunder get the one seed, which they are currently at in the market, a plus 170, SGA is going to win MVP. Like, I'll tell you that right now. If the Thunder get the one seed, I think that Shea Gillis Alexander wins MVP, regardless of what happens the rest of the way. I do not think the Denver Nuggets are going to get the one seed because I do not think that they're going to put their foot down. I think they're going to play hard for about the next, oh, I don't know, 10 days or so, and then they're going to put it on cruise control. The Thunder are going to push it to the end, and I think that they have the best chance of getting the one seed. And if they're the one seed, I think SGA wins MVP. So what I will tell you is there's a, there is an inequity in the market in that if the Thunder are plus 170 to make the one seed, SGA needs to be plus 170 to win MVP. Those two things are tied, and they're not, because there's a 250, 275 in the market for SGA. So by that very nature, 
I think that there's an inequity in the market. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Thunder get the one seed and Mark Dagnall wins coach of the year and everyone says Shea will get next year. Jokic is getting this one. Maybe. But Jokic's numbers don't necessarily add up the way that they, they usually do. He is not leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else in the advanced metrics. And so I do think that there's, and I will say this, there's just going to be a lot of folks looking for another guy to, to vote for. And is that ridiculous after what we went through last year? Absolutely. But it's going to happen again. So I still continue to believe I'm having a hard time here because I want to hedge my SGA position, which I am over leveraged on. And yet I keep coming back to when I look at the, at the entire field, I'm just like, no, the best value still is on Shea Gildas Alexander.